subscribe. So this is a little bit of a different video than I've ever done before. Basically, I have a bunch of cons this month, specifically our Renaissance Fair, TwitchCon, and you know, it's Halloween. So I'm gonna be doing just so much crafting this month, and I figured, hey, why not film it? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to talk through some of the ways that I make things, as well as also show you a little bit of a different process of how I get into cosplays. All right, so here's the game plan. I have two cosplays I need to get done. Number one, Blood God Techno. And as of filming this, I have six days to get everything done for him. And number two, finishing my new character, Sherbert Wings, which I have a little bit more time for, which is 12 days. So we're doing great. So let's just jump right into it. Take it away, Editor Sherbert. All right, first off, we're gonna tackle the mask. I started out with this goat skull mask from Spirit of Halloween and immediately just got to ripping it apart. I disconnected the jaw by cutting these little strips and then pried off the metal connectors and we got the two halves separated. We're really only going to be using the top side, so we'll just put the jaw aside for now. Next, I gotta cut off the horns, which I originally planned to do with a saw, but these big shears that I had actually ended up cutting through the plastic really well, so that was a lot easier. And we've got a good base. It's a little rough around the edges, so to fix that, I took some of this model foam clay and sculpted it to make it smoother and also just round out the top in general. Nice! After letting the foam clay around the edges dry for a day, it's painting time. I went and got this funky shade of white paint that I think looked pretty close to bone and just started using it all over. I was a little more careful on the top side, making sure I didn't miss any spots, and then a little bit messier on the bottom because that side's not really going to be seen, uh, but it's good to have it painted anyway. And there we go! We got a good little base for the mask. Now I just let that paint dry for another day, and I started sculpting the tusks out of foil. I use this technique all the time when I need to make costume pieces like horns, for example. I get some aluminum foil and squish it down into the rough shape of what I'm looking for. There we go. You can see a little rough plan of where I'm trying to put these boys. Next, I take some hot glue and glue both the foil together to itself and also attach it to the mask. I like to glue it all around the base and I'm not too worried about it looking messy because I'm going to end up covering the whole thing in more foam clay. So let's do that. I personally really like the feel of foam clay and how easy it is to shape and the way it dries, so I just start smacking it all over the tusks. Definitely a little bit sticky, so sometimes I just gotta move it around in my hands a little bit, and then it's good to go on the mask. Using foil as the base keeps it from getting too heavy and also makes it so I don't have to use just a ridiculous amount of foam clay. So I just cover the outside with it until it's smooth and the shape that I want. Make sure to cover the area on the underside of the mask as well, just in case it ever shows up on camera, and go over any last bits of foil or glue showing through. And we're good! I let that dry for about another day, and it's time to go back to painting details on the mask. For these, I used a slightly redder paint to do a little bit of Blood God coated shading around the edges. I do it specifically around the eye holes, the nose holes, and the actual edges of the mask. Then I went back and I used this painting technique called dry brushing and went over the whole mask and the tusk. Dry brushing is essentially dipping your brush in paint but then using most of it until the brush has almost no paint on it and then lightly painting over the whole area. This leaves behind only little bits of the paint and adds a nice little texturing so it's not all just one color. And I think that looks pretty good. With that, the mask itself is pretty much done but there's one more detail I wanted to add as an option for when I'm filming. I wanted to add this little hook and clasp on the top of the mask so I could choose to hook it on the shoulder of the cape if I wanted while filming or walking around. To do that, I took this metal hook and secured it to the top of the mask with hot glue. I also added some bits of fabric over and under to really make sure that it wouldn't snap off if the weight of the mask pulled too hard on the cape. And we're good! Now to move on to the cape. For some ridiculous reason, I decided I wanted to make an entire new cape for this version of Techno, so we're starting completely from scratch. First off, I go grab all of my fabrics. I'm using the same type of fabric that I used to make my regular techno cape, which is this kind of felt-like material in both black and red, and this big old piece of black fur. And scene change! I actually went back to my parents' house to do this part because they had a little bit bigger open floor space than our house for me to measure on. So you guys get a rare little Papa Sherb appearance. Anyway, to start the process for the cape, I want it to fit specifically to myself and my shoulders. So I lay out the fabric on the ground like that and um, lay on it. I know, very professional. But I have Papa Sherb draw a line around my figure with a good little bit of extra room to make sure I have slack for when I sew the edges together. And once the lines are drawn, I can cut the fabric. 
This first piece is for the back of the cape, so it's the biggest, and I can actually use it as a reference to cut the rest, meaning I only really have to measure once. So I know that if I fold the back piece in half, I'll have a generous piece for the front that I can trim down later. So that's exactly what I do. Then I repeat the whole process again with the black fabric, except I can use the red piece to measure this time. The final plan for the cape is to have the inside be lined with the black fabric and the outside be red. So in terms of fabric pieces, I just need identical pieces in the black and the red to sew together. And there we go. Fabric cut and acquired. It's time to start the sewing. The first thing I need to sew is the seams that connect the three main sections of the cape. During this stage, I'll actually also attach the red to the black and sew the four layers of fabric together at once. So before I hop onto my sewing machine, I lay all the fabrics out on top of each other and trim them down to be exactly the same size. Once I get them lined up all nice, I pin them in place to make sure the fabric doesn't shift while I'm sewing, and it's time to get into it. You might notice that it looks like the black would be on the outside of the cape as I'm sewing it. It looks like that because once I've sewn the seam line, I'm going to turn the cape inside out so that the messy edges are hidden and you only see the nice indents from the front. One side done, then it's a quick trim and pin again, and... Boom! Both main sides are done. And that's what we've got so far. Just some nice edges on the outside, and it looks solid. Of course, there's these funky bits on the top that we've got to trim down, which we're going to do by, you guessed it, laying down again. This time, you guys get a surprise Centros appearance to draw the lines around me. Once I have the lines around my shoulders, I can cut the fabric and start sewing those edges together. Here's what the cut fabric just looks like. <laughs> and there we go. Next step is to sew all of the edges together. Right now, the fabric is only connected at those seams and the edges are still apart. So I'm just gonna sew all around the edges to keep it together. In the end, all those edges are going to get covered in fur. So I'm not worried about the seam line showing by the end of it. So let's go! And there we have it. Sewing segment done! And it totally didn't take like three hours. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the fur! First things first, I gotta cut the long strips to go along the sides, around the front, and the bottom. To cut the fur, I don't actually use the scissors, because cutting directly through fur is just not a good idea, and the fur will get everywhere. So I actually use this X-Acto knife along the back to make sure I cut through as little of the actual fur as possible. And we got our two pieces. Now I need to make one more longer piece to go around the bottom, and... Boom! Now it's time to glue. And boy do I need a lot of hot glue. I chose to glue the fur over sewing it because I don't have a perfect technique for sewing through fur yet, so this is just the next best option. And I'll tell you guys this now, this takes a long time. So I'm just gonna give you a nice little montage of this process and then we'll keep going. There we go. That is one side of the front. And because of how long this takes, I didn't even try to film the rest of the gluing since it's basically the same thing, so... Nice! Now I just need to do the same thing around the top. For this process, I use two pieces of fur and start from both sides of the front and then have them meet in the back and overlap. There's a lot of micromanaging through this part and getting the fur exactly where I want it to be, so let's just get into it. And that's the fur! Five hours of hot gluing condensed into about a minute. Anyways, let's add the finishing touches. The buttons! I measure out roughly where I want them to go, and I hand sew these buttons onto the cape. I do a couple run-throughs, and then add this hot glue to the back to keep the thread in place and just add some extra stability. Nice! Then I can add the chain, and it's starting to look like a cape! Before I can say it's completely done, though, I gotta add the clasp to go along with the mask option for the shoulder. So I feel out where I want the mask to be and mark where the clasp should go and do the same thing that I did with the buttons. Boom, and that's the cape made completely from scratch. How about we actually get into the cosplay now? I start out in my base fit and there we go. The base fit for this cosplay is kind of just a full black version of the normal techno fit, including the funky pants. Next, I need to go brush out the wig, which I was planning to have completely down for this version of him, so it was a little bit easier than having to rebraid the whole thing. 
Once the wig is all good, I put on the corset, which is also new for this cosplay. And then I add the leather belt sheath over the corset and we've got a solid base fit. Now it's contact time. This video, as usual, is sponsored by Mocha Queen, and it is finally time for me to properly use these amazing full sclera contacts that I ordered from them a while back, specifically for this cosplay, and I have been so freaking hype in anticipation. Several months ago, when I decided I wanted to make this cosplay, I knew exactly what I wanted the eyes to look like, and these full scleras hit right on the nose. It's spooky season, so if you're interested in trying out some colored contacts for the first time for Halloween, there has never been a better time. You can head over to mochaqueen.com through the link in the description below and use code SHERBERQUAKE for 20% off. With that out of the way and these stunning contacts in, let's start the makeup. I'm going to kind of speed through this section because most of the makeup is the same as the makeup that I showed in my regular Technoblade Get Ready With Me video but I specifically darkened a lot more around the eyes and made the scars a little bit more red and prominent. And as a last little detail, I added some gold glitter around my eyes to give a little bit of a funky shine. Then it's time to add the jewelry, which there is a lot of. I have a lot of the same necklaces as my normal techno cosplay, as well as my big old gold drip necklaces. I add my bracers, my bracelets, my pins, and it's time to put on the finished cape. Yippee! It looks so good. Then I spend a good little bit messing around with the hair again, which I decided to keep fully down for this. I had to pit it in a little bit better in some places, but it ended up looking pretty good. Then I add the earrings. Yeah, I may have overdone it a bit with the earrings, but hey, Piglin Lad do what Piglin Lad do. I add even more gold with the rings, and of course, the mask. And that's the full cosplay! There you have it, my full Blood God Technoblade cosplay. Phew. Now, the plan originally was to take the full cosplay to our Renaissance Fair, but after filming TikToks for four hours, I ended up taking off a couple pieces, mainly the wig, and doing just a simpler version for Ren Fair. Here we go. epic maneuver right now. Yeah? Reaching all the way into my bag behind me. Can you tell she has a bag? Oh, you know, it's not, it's not as hunchback right now. Drip. <laughs> Bottles. They lounge. And as for the character Sherbert Wings, well, we're getting there. 